Hello everybody, uh, my name is Amanda Ellis, welcome to my channel, I uh, hope you're all well. Today is the 10th of June 2020 when I reinstate this video that you're about to watch. It was actually uh, made two years ago in 2018 and it was an exploration into what potentially may have happened to Madeleine McCann. Um, the three-year-old little girl who went missing from Praia de Luz in Portugal 13 years ago now. Um, some of you might remember this video that you're about to re-watch, some of you may never have seen it before. It was widely viewed at the time, Had I don't know, it was hitting way over 100,000 um, views, became a bit of a juggernaut to be perfectly honest, and I decided to take it down um, in 2018 um, after some threats to myself. Now, um, I'm reinstating it today because I know that I'm completely 100% spiritually protected, I'm safe. Um, I also know that actually what is in this video is what is already out there in terms of conclusions that other people have arrived at as well, um, my peers in my field basically. Um, I don't watch a lot of other channels to be to be honest, but I hear from others that, oh, you know, so-and-so said similar things. So I know that I'm not the only psychic medium who's picking up the particular um, conclusion that this video reaches. Um, but it is quite interesting re-watching it two years on, knowing what we know now as well, or rather what we don't know now. The re whole reason why this is now back up in the spotlight and I'm putting the video back up is that over a week ago, there was a development within the case. They have a new um, suspect, um, Christian Bruckner, I think his name is. And um, I made a video last week on that called Smoke and Mirrors, where I'm basically saying that my gut feel, my intuitive um, feel, all of my psychic senses and are just flashing red to that story as being a red herring and not the truth. Whether it's partly the truth or not, I don't know, but certainly there is a case to answer that lies elsewhere. And that case to answer elsewhere really lies in the material that is presented in this video to come. Um, and I would also like to add a few things that I didn't say two years ago as well, which I now know now. When you watch this video, you'll see that I think I, I came to it very, um, I came to it very neutral. I wasn't anticipating finding what I found, which was uh, two narratives. One, which probably doesn't surprise us knowing what we know now in 2020, which was the involvement of some form of secret society stroke elite that helped cover up this crime may also have participated in some form of abuse before she died or after she died. Horrible thing to say, but it's what I'm feeling. But, 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 it's not just about that. There's also another energy that comes through very strongly. And every time I pull the cards, including now in 2020, I'm getting the same um, information, which is there was also an accidental death um, at the apartment. And um, there was a case to answer. Um, from the parents basically. So I look at the energy of uh, Maddie, I bring a voice through for her. I look at it from the perspective of the mother, the father, and also the Portuguese police. So you can watch this, but I will just add a few things, as I say, that are not in this video you're about to watch, but I think are actually crucial to bear in mind when you actually um, listen to me or anybody else. I did, on my video last week, flag up a couple of people who I think are um, very serious, um, earnest, worthwhile, investigative journalists who've done decades of research into this case and who, if you really want to look at it, are worth, it's worth looking at their material. I'll put the links below again. One is Sonia Poulton. The other one is Richard D. Hall who um, interviewed somebody who, I don't know whether he was from the CIA or the FBI, or I think it might be FBI, but anyway, somebody who's got a lot of experience in terms of being able to analyse 
what people say, but actually what they really mean. So taking it into a whole other level, not just linked into body language, but in terms of the, 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 the way that people say things. It's hours worth of material. If you want to look at that, it's, it's very good. Um, there's also a new guy that I've just found um, by chance in the last week who I quite like the style of. He's a fellow Brit. He's called the Armchair Detective. And again, he just, um, he comes to, well, he just presents the, he just presents a lot of the evidence that you're not being presented with in the mainstream media. Um, he also led me to the fact that the, um, all of the uh, work that the Portuguese police did has been um, released under, um, I don't know, an, a Freedom Act or something. Um, and that is available online. I think it's called the P PJ files or something. Uh, again, loads and loads of information. But what this guy does is he breaks it down into nuggets so you don't have to wade all the way through it. Um, a few things I would like to mention. When you watch my, the video that you're about to, one of the first things that Maggie, Maggie, interesting I just said Maggie, uh, Maddie talks about is, um, interesting I said Maggie, I don't know whether that's relevant or not. Don't know why I would say that. But anyway, one of the first things that Maddie says is she talks about dogs. Now, I didn't take it anywhere. I didn't pick up on it two years ago. But, but what now I know is that the there were dogs of course that were sent into the um apartment to smell basically for the, the scent of a, a dead body and they went in independently they were expert dogs in their field they were flown in from i don't know whether it was the uk or somewhere else and they both um scented it um in the apartment behind the sofa i think it was and then they both also um smelt the same thing um, within the hire car that the McCanns had hired. Um, the car was parked in a parking lot with other vehicles. Both dogs independently went up to that particular car and in particular towards the boot. So just quite interesting that she, men she mentions dogs. It's one of the first things she mentions, but I didn't pick up on it two years ago. Um, the other thing that's happened in the last week is when I made the smoke and videos, the smoke and mirrors video, um, when you come into this work, you're always um, needing to protect yourself because it's, it is a heavy energy. So I knew I'd been wading in the, you know, the mire with it, really. Um, but, you know, did the video, cl cleared myself. It's all fine. Went downstairs and our fridge, which just happens to be 13 years old, which is also the length of the of this case, it's been going for 13 years. My fridge that had been working every day of its life stopped working within an hour of making that last video. And because I know that spirit can give you all sorts of weird and wonderful signs and you've got to sort of put the pieces of the jigsaw together, I thought, I wonder whether that means anything. I think it does mean something. I've just done that piece of work. Why is my fridge now not working? So I tapped into Google fridge, Madeleine McCann. And what comes up, which I had no awareness of at all, is there are discredited, I and mean, it's always discredited stories because it doesn't fit an official narrative, but there are discredited stories that were reported, certainly in the UK press, that they were, the Portuguese police were suggesting at one time that whether it was a body that had been hidden in a fridge or whether it was incriminating evidence that had been hidden in a fridge. But the point was that, I can't verify this, but I'm just reporting what I found on Google. Um, Jerry McCann, the father, was supposed to have taken a fridge from the apartment where they were staying on holiday to the tip in Portugal within the, a week or so after her disappearance. A, that's really strange because why would you do that if you're on holiday? You'd just, you'd just ring the person who, whose apartment it was to sort it out. But B, it's the last thing you'd do if your child was missing, be faffing around with fridges. So I don't know if anybody knows about that story. Um, but I just, again, I'm just putting it because it was a very odd thing to happen. The other physical sign that I got happening in my house um, over the last couple of days is the day that I made the smoke and mirrors video, 
I was getting ready to do it. I was putting on my makeup in the morning, as I always do. And as I'm getting ready, I'm like you probably do, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do that day, you know. And that day I knew I was going to do that video. So I had Madeline in my head. And I was just thinking about, I wonder what's going to, what I'm going to say. I wonder what's going to come out with the cards. And I've got a whole range of makeup and perfumes on my dressing table. One bottle I never use. Um, I bought it years ago. It was a cheapy perfume from Victoria's Secret, actually. Um, and the thing about it is that I'm just looking for the photograph of it. I took a photograph of what happened. Um, I, I just noticed it. For some reason, it caught my attention. And it caught my attention because the bottle looks like this. Can you see that? OK, that's what the bottle looks like. Um, and it's a very girly sort of spray. It's not the sort of thing that I'm, I normally would go for. And it caught my eye because I was linking into Madeline and I was thinking, that looks really girly and that looks like something I bet she would have loved as a little girl. Um, roll forward 24, 48 hours. I go back into my room. Following a couple of days, I'm sitting there doing my makeup again. And that bottle that has been sitting there for a, for a good couple of years, to be honest, unused, had... Well, I don't quite know how it had happened, but basically the perfume had, there was no hole in the bottom of it. So I assume it had come out of the top somehow. It was sitting in a congealed mass of perfume, which was waxy in nature and, al al and with the alcohol content. And what it basically did was it left that mark on my brand new dressing table. <laughs> Um, can you see that? You see that mark? OK, so that's where the paint has actually been stripped off from the bottle being on the on the dressing table. My first thought when I saw that was it looks like a grave. It looks like the site of a grave. But equally, I also then went back to actually, let's look at this bottle again. Let's look at the name of it. The name is Tea's Flower. And I, I straight away felt that that energy of Tea's has an energy linked into potential paedophilia. Um, you know, it's like a childlike tease type energy. Um, not that she would have intentionally done that, but in a perverted mind of somebody who looks at children in that way, that's sort of how they may may view them, that, oh, she's teasing me, whereas actually she's just being a little girl. You know, there's purity in her soul. It's you that have got the perverted um, uh, eyes that are seeing it in that way. So I think there's something in that tease flower and I'm feeling quite hot again as I'm saying it. And you'll see that in this video to come, when I actually bring up the subject of paedophilia as a potential area that needs to be looked at in this, I get so hot and uncomfortable. Um, it's it's quite apparent. I'm feeling it again here. So, yeah, that was that was a strange thing that happened as well. The other thing was, of course, it's Victoria's secret. OK, secret. Um, the thing about this case is that you can come to a conclusion and you think, OK, well, OK, that's what we think based on what we know now. But there are so many different strands to it. And it's one of the first things I say in this video, which is that it's almost as though um, well, it, it, it's, it's like a mass. It, energetically, it's like a mass of something with all of these different strands coming off it. And I think that's why we're being asked to why it's. One of the reasons why it's staying energetically um, with us, because we are meant to be looking at where it's leading, whether it's linking into dubious organisations and links to child trafficking, whether it's linked into um, abuse within the home or outside of the home, whether it's linked into cover up, which I think it certainly is. Um, I don't know. You know, there's just many, many different strands from it. But a few people also mentioned that, of course, um, I think there's a I'm just going to say there's a link to Epstein in terms of association with that particular brand. OK, I'm going to choose my words carefully there. But that again, that could just be coincidence. It might just be the, it's the secret. Somebody's got a secret. And you see today sitting down to do this video, I thought something still I'm not getting from that thing, Victoria's Secret. So again, I've just typed into Google. I have not watched the Netflix um, documentary on the case, but apparently I'm just going on what's in the, the media. If you type it in, what comes up is that those that have watched the Netflix documentary, there's, people are saying that there's a, a, a woman that looked like Victoria B. OK, I'm not wanting to bring her energy into it because it's got nothing to do with Victoria B. That's why I'm not saying her second name. 
Um, it, she just looks like this person. So, and she's supposed to hold a, 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 a key. She's, she's supposed to hold a clue. There's a strange woman that's well, supposed to have been in Barcelona the day after Maddie disappeared, who looks like Victoria B, who came up to a man and said, have you, have you got her yet? I'm waiting for my new child or something. So that again is bringing another strand in, which may be to do with children being sold, but potentially to actually go to somebody very wealthy, you know, who wants a child. And that's the thing with this case. There's so many different aspects to it, okay? And that's also why I thought it was important to maybe just reinstate what I found two years ago. Um, the other thing you should know, because some people don't know about this case, is that, yeah, there's been over £10 million spent on it, okay? Um, every year there is more funding um, for it. Um, the parents themselves have also raised, I think, at least a couple of million pounds Part of that money was used to hire a PR person, public relations person. Um, it's also true to say that within the first few hours of her disappearing, uh, I think it was either Gordon Brown or Tony Blair, it was that government of its day, sent their media, their top media guy, Clarence Mitchell, to the case within hours. So within hours of her going missing, top um, government officials and government support was there like that. OK, like that, um, which, again, is just saying something, isn't it? Why? Why would that happen? You know, there are children, unfortunately, go missing every day of 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 uh, of the world. Um, the other thing that is I'm just going to raise here is that the McCann's were known to have had dinner with Clement Freud uh, at least a couple of times. Um, they're now saying they didn't realise that he was a high-ranking paedophile. Clement Freud, if you don't know who he is, is a was, he's dead now, a UK media um, personality, respected broadcaster of his day, actually. And then he died and all of this, you know, information surfaced about, um, about paedophilia with young girls. So for some reason they're having dinner with him um, I think because he invited them, his villa basically is a third of the mile away from where she went missing. So there's just so many odd things about this case. So many odd things. Um, I know a few people or a lot of people also speculate on the um, the identikit profiles, you know, that were put out by the police. People say that they look like um, some high ranking American officials. Again, I'm not going to name them here. Um, I, from what I have read myself, there's no actual official evidence to say that they were definitely there at that time. Um, but there's certainly evidence that Clement Freud was in the area. Not that I'm saying he did it, but it's just all a bit strange. Um, I'm going to let you watch the video now, um, but I will just show you four cards that I pulled the other day from a different deck just to see if I could get anything else. I always get the same. I always get the same cards. Basically, I basically ask the question: um, Show me what happened. Who did it? Show me what happened. The first card that comes up is the card of a man and a woman. Okay, the card of union. The next card that came up, which I thought was quite interesting, is the Ace of Stars, which is creation. But to me, this is just linked into the sea. You'll see in the video to come that the sea features quite predominantly. I feel that she was put into water. Watery grave. The sun is illuminating the case again. The sun, uh, you see Pride de Luge is called um, the Beach of Light. It's a, um, I've been there, I've been there a couple of times. I went there before she went missing and I went there uh, two years ago, just before I took the video down actually. That was the threat, you see. I was about to go into the resort again, so I got the threat coming in that if you step off the plane, this type of thing's you know, going to happen to you. And I went in with great fear and trepidation, but of course nothing happened. And actually what I found in Pride de Luge was the most beautiful energy. It's a beautiful, beautiful resort. Um, I didn't feel any evil or negativity. I felt, I actually felt beauty there. I felt real beauty. So whatever happened there happened, but the energy is... I want you to know is good there now. Um, the next card that came up, you'll see this card comes up twice in the reading to follow, the card of rest. This links into the sedation I feel happened. And then we got get the card of the retreat, which to me says that it, 
the card of the retreat for me links into like the hermit type energy which is that it happened in the home so we've got the man and the woman we've got again the card of sleep and rest sedation i think here we've got a card which implies it is inner you know within within it's, it's re retreat it's got it's it's not about going outside to find the perpetuators it's it was within the apartment and we have the energy of the sea <clears throat> the final card that i got today and those that follow my facebook page know because i talked about this but i'll just put it up i got this card illumination this shows a little girl and she's in front of this huge gate okay so illumination on this case at the moment and my the reason i am putting this back up and the reason i would like the focus to still be on it is that I think we should just be asking for true justice, for the true truth to come out, whatever that is, and to hold the light for that eventuality, and also to hold the light for all of these branches of other stories that seem to splinter off this case. Whether they're proven to be relevant to this case or not, they're still being highlighted, whether it's child trafficking, whether it's child abuse, whether it's child neglect, uh, child abandonment, um, children being sold to order for rich families maybe that can't have children you know it's all all of these things are being spotlighted by this case as well of course as all the missing children that go missing and they don't have 10 million pounds spent on them and they don't have 13 years of focus and attention and what came through very strongly in the video you're about to see is that maddie wants us to hold the light for them as well so in that in that light um i'll let you now watch the video much love and please light a, light a candle for her and light a candle for all the missing children and for truth to arise. Namaste. Bye bye for now. Hi everyone. This is Amanda Ellis of amandaellis.co.uk, Facebook page Angelic Celestial Colours. Um, I'm aware that maybe a few people might check into this video who don't know who I am. So I'll just briefly explain that I channel the energy of the Archangels and in particular Archangel Metatron. I'm also a colour therapist, a healer and a spiritual teacher. And Archangel Metatron as my main guide is one who is helping all of us, myself included, to understand things from a higher perspective. It's one of the remits that I was given when I started off um, doing this work a few years ago now and Metatron came in as one of my main guides. And those of you that follow my Facebook page and indeed my YouTube channel will know that I'm not afraid to um, look at subjects that maybe are a little bit challenging or difficult but it's always about trying to understand them at a higher level, okay? And sometimes trying to understand them at a higher level can be quite difficult, um, but that's where Metatron comes in and helps us to grasp what he is trying to say to us, what we are trying to learn from any situation or event. Um, so today we're going to be looking at the case of Madeleine McCann, and the reason that I have been asked to look at this because it is a request from spirit um, is due to the fact that I have a sort of personal connection with the town where she was taken from which is Praia de Luz in um, Portugal uh, I uh, my family own um, an apartment in the block actually uh, where she was taken from and they've owned that they've earned they've owned that apartment for quite a number of years and indeed I visited um, that complex uh, the Ocean Club which of course is very infamous it's where um, Jerry and Kate McCann were holidaying I visited that complex about a year before um, she was she disappeared and um, I haven't been back since actually more because uh, I have young children myself and it just felt, I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me. Maybe I didn't feel it was safe. My children are now growing up um, and um, aren't toddlers anymore and it just feels okay to go back. So this summer I'm going back to Praia de Luge 
and I realised that I will be there around the Lionsgate, um, I'm flying in on Lionsgate, which I hadn't appreciated that's what I was doing. Um, but now I'm thinking that actually feels quite significant that of all the times to be going back, I'm going back on Lionsgate and I'm also going back 11 years after she disappeared. And if you'd asked me a few months ago, was I going to be in Portugal in August? I would have said no, because we had no plans whatsoever to go. The holiday sort of has landed in our lap. But yeah, she was taken on the 3rd of May 2017. So um, that can't be right. It must be 2007. Um, I've written down 2017. I think it was 2007 that she was taken. I'm pretty sure it's 11 years since she was um, she was disappeared or she was taken. Um, anyway, I just feel this great big um, request really coming in from Metatron to have a look at this. The first thing to say is this isn't intended to be a video where, which is about sound bites, which is about watch it for the first five minutes and you get the answer in terms of what happened to her. Um, that's just ego. That's just somebody who's putting themselves out there as knowing the truth and you don't. Um, that's not my style. What I'm going to be attempting to do here is to call in my guides and give it my best shot. Um, and I'm going to be looking at it from different perspectives. I'm going to be looking at it from the perspective of Maddie herself, perspective of her parents and perspective of the Portuguese police. Um, in particular, those are the three, and obviously bringing Metatron into all of that as well. Um, so I do this with um, an open heart. Um, I also do this with a slightly heavy heart because over the last couple of days, I've been getting ready to do this and um, I've pulled some cards on it myself. The smoke you can see, by the way, is my incense in case you're wondering what's happening. Um, I've pulled some cards on it myself and I know some of the subjects that are going to be coming up for us to look at. And I feel a little bit uncomfortable with it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say now, right at the outset, why I'm feeling uncomfortable um, with it. Because uh, I believe that anybody is innocent until proven guilty. That's the first thing to say. Nobody has been charged with... Um, murder if that is indeed what happened or manslaughter we'll look at what that what might have happened um so i don't want to set myself up as judge and jury um also there is there are, i know there's going to be some stuff that comes up about the parents and their responsibility and um possible accident that happened um and i'm aware they've got they've still got children they've got two other children so but i'm doing this because i feel this case is so huge, so big, and actually at the heart of it, there is this little girl, Madeline, but it is about so much more than just that. And even if what happened, my gut feel before I've gone in and done the cards, and I'm gonna do them live so you can see it happening, uh, my, my gut feel before I even start off, I'm just gonna say on record, because everybody has an opinion on this. You can't, unless you've lived in a cave with no electricity, um, and no access to any media for the last 11 years, you will have an opinion on this case, myself included. My gut feel on it is I feel it was an accident that was covered up for whatever reason. Um, but we're going to see what Metatron says and we're going to see what the card says. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's a bit uncomfortable for me, but sometimes what we're asked to do by spirit is uncomfortable. So I'm just going to put all of that aside and I'm going to ask Metatron to come and speak through me, please, with clarity, with truth, with discernment and with love. And for whatever comes through my mouth to be words which are helpful um, to the solving of this, to creating more peace and... at heart to help find out what happened here. Okay, uh, let's get into it. I'm going to show you what I've got in front of me. Um, I'm going to use two decks of cards, by the way. I'm using the White and Saunders Tarot deck. It's a friend of mine, Donna Maxine White, who has created these. Uh, I'll put the link to her website. Maybe tell her it's via me if you um, order them. It's quite nice for her to know that you've seen a video where I've actually been using her cards 
because she lives in the same town as me. And she's a great, great girl, Donna. Um, I'm going to be using those. I'm also going to be using the Fountain Tarot uh, by... This only arrived in my house a few days ago. Who did it? I'm not actually sure who even made them. Um, they haven't put their names on the box. Hmm, it's unusual, isn't it? It doesn't say, it just says the Fountain Tarot. So anyway, I'll put the details of that again up. I've got my sprays to hand. I'm gonna be using my sprays. And I know that the guides that I'm, I'm calling in are Metatron and Mother Mary in particular. I've also got Archangel Zadkiel here as well. Um, I've got two photographs in front of me, which I've printed out. This first one of Madeline is not probably um, the most well-known one. Um, it is one that's in the media, but um, this is one that I felt guided to use to help me tune into her. And I've also got this photograph of her parents, um, Kate and Jerry. Okay. Right, now this is the second attempt at making this video. I got 11 minutes into it this morning and then the phone rang and my mother needed something and I had to literally drop everything that I was doing and go off and sort her out. So um, I had already done 11 minutes. I'm just gonna tell you what came through um, in that. Um, I And then I'm going to carry on where I left off. So what was coming through was I was um, linking into Madeline's energy to start with. And I was using, and I will resume using in a moment, the Rainbow Bridge Spray, okay? The Rainbow Bridge Spray by Archangel Metatron. Um, this is one that helps to connect to spirit, either side of the veil. Metatron reminds us that the Rainbow Bridge has two ends. One end is in the earth, and the other end is in what we will call heaven, okay? For want of a better word, heaven and earth. Um, and so it is possible to commune with spirits in heaven okay and it's also possible to commune with spirits who are of course earthbound when we go um, and uh, connect with somebody across the Met metatron rainbow bridge we are meeting at the apex point of the bridge so it's the place where heaven and earth meet it's almost like a place of neutrality so that's what we did and i asked for madeline to come and she came in the, or I saw rather, a vision of a girl who was probably aged between seven and eight, okay? And I was explaining that um, this could have two meanings. It could be that she's showing me herself aged seven to eight, a few years after she disappeared and she's still alive. Although I suspect it's more that she was showing me a vision of how she is developing the other side of the veil because when people pass to spirit, there is this um, wrong assumption sometimes that they just stay looking as they did when they passed. And that is an inaccuracy. I mean, they can stay like that, but a lot of mediums will tell you that, you know, when they're connecting in to people the other side of the veil, sometimes they will appear much younger than they were when they passed. Sometimes they'll look older. They tend to go well, I don't know why, why they do. I just know they do. So she, she showed me herself age about seven to eight. She was standing in this field and she had beside her a beautiful white horse. And she was telling me that she loved horses and that if she had stayed on the earth plane longer, she would have really enjoyed riding horses on the earth. But then she sort of was making a little joke and she was saying, but it's okay because I've got my friend here with me. And this white horse um, and Madeline have a very heart to heart connection. Um, and then that's as far as I got. So I'm gonna go back into it now where we left off, okay? And I'm going to ask for Madeline to come back please and help me resume. And let's see what it is that she wants to say, what it is that we're meant to hear. So the Rainbow Bridge, asking Archangel Metatron to be with me. And we're just going to walk across the Rainbow Bridge and we are meeting her at the apex. And she's um, she is coming from spirit and she's bringing the white horse with her. She's not riding the horse. She is, um, I'm, I'm no equestrian person, so I don't know, the, is it the bridle or the reins? She's um, she's guiding this horse. This horse is following her. The horse has got quite um, heavy hooves. It it looks more like now I'm seeing it now. It looks more like a Shire horse, 
Um, it's very, um, it's big. It's not, it's not sleek. It's a big animal. Um, it feels very protective. It's very strong. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a male horse. And even though she's, she's showing me herself a little bit older now, I would actually put her around the age of, Mm. not very good with ages I want to say 12 13 um, but it might be a little bit younger she's not coming across as seven or eight she's a little bit older but she's certainly not fully matured or anything like that um, and she's taller than the last time that I saw her and she yes she's bringing this horse with her um, to greet us and uh, Metatron is saying it's okay there's some there's some hay here for this horse and he's asking her just to tether the horse and um, for us to spend some time with just her. Metatron is thanking her for coming. He's saying how are you? Um, she's saying she's fine. Um, I'm aware of the energy between Metatron and Madeline and it's not the first time that they've met. It's as though he's been checking in on her um, from time to time. Uh, there's an acquaintanceship here. Um, there's a familiarity with each other. Um, and then he's saying, and this is Amanda. So there's like three of us on this bridge. So I'm going to ask her now to converse with me. So Madeline, what is it that you, um, that we, you wish to say to us? I'm feeling a sense of um, block within the throat chakra and the higher heart and it's as though um, she is saying that of all the, it's strange, it's as though of all the media coverage over the last decade, of all the voices that have been heard, her actual voice has never been heard. Um, it feels as though it's very much been about the parents or the police or possible suspects. It's as though her voice hasn't been heard. And there is this sense with her of pain here with regard to, but I have got something to say. So we're here and we wish to hear what you have to say, Madeleine. I'm gonna light a candle for you at this point. Just feel I would need to give her something. This is for you. This is for all children as well that have gone missing or who, are dis who have disappeared. Um, and she's taking that, it's as though she's only take, she's taking it, but she only wants to take it on behalf of not just herself, but of all the others. And she's saying, look behind me and look, and look at how many others there are behind me. And I can't see their faces, but I just get the impression there are all these other children um, in spirit, the other side of the bridge. And it's as though she's she's got Status isn't quite the right word, but it's like she's respected. She's got status in the spiritual world. There are other spirits that um, naturally incline towards her vibration. Okay, so it's not that they look up to her necessarily, because that's a very 3D earthly construct. It's more that they, um, they warm to her vibration. It's like she is one of them but she's almost like the face of many, is what she's saying. So she's saying, I accept the light on behalf of the others, thank you. Um, there is this energy with her where she's more worried about us than her. Um, it's weird, it's like she's saying, how are you? Um, but not just me, how are you? Those, what, how, how are you? Look at her eyes. How are you? She's 
not a young soul. She's a, she's a very old soul. I'm gonna pull some cards for her. Um, this is her story. I want to just call it Madeline's story, okay? And then we're gonna look at it from other points of view. Um, I'm gonna ask her what happened. Is there anything that you can show me, Madeline? What happened? Um, okay, I'm not going to filter anything that comes through, so I'm just going to say what comes through. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing like a gully, um, like a water gully, um, which is beside the road. Um, she's drawing my attention to d the dogs. Um, for some reason I'm being shown the water, a water gully within an, a road, a pavement. Um, the water flows down to the sea, she says. The water flows down to me. I don't get the feeling she's still alive. Um, I'm hearing the word remains. I feel remains will be un uncovered through unusual, something unusual, whether it be some unusual weather pattern that, I don't know, pulls the water back further than it should be or um, or it's some somebody finds something it's, it's an unusual way that eventually something is found that links back to her it's got something to do with the sea it's got something to do with that water gully that I was seeing um, what else can you tell me I'm seeing the flower of life as a symbol that everything is connected to everything else. This isn't just one story. It's as though whatever happened, there was a narrative within it but then there are all these offshoots of other narratives and other parts of the story, some of which we know and some of which we don't know. It's quite complex, it's multi-layered. If it had been easy to solve, it would have been solved by now, she says. How are you feeling at this time? Impatient, I'm hearing the word impatient. There's a sense of impatience in terms of wanting the truth to come out because then everybody can get on with their own lives, including her. There's a sense that her energy is very locked in to this particular incarnation and this story because it is unfinished and because so many are holding on to it on the earth plane. Um, and it's as though she's locked in to it. Um, karmically, I want to say a little bit as well. All of the players in it are linked in karmically and it can't be healed 100% until the whole story has been revealed and it will is what she's saying, and she's sort of impatient for that. Um, but it's getting closer. The moment is getting closer where the truth can be revealed. 
what is the truth. Cover up. Cover up, I'm hearing. Cover up a body. Cover up lies. She was quite um, highly spirited, feisty, um, so enigma. She's an enigma. Wasn't there such a thing as the enigma code? Didn't they break the enigma code finally? Why am I hearing enigma code? Um, just want to look that up. Enigma code. Yeah, I'm right. During the Second World War, Alan Turing worked at the Government Code and Cipher School at Bletchley Park, where he devised the techniques which cracked the German Enigma Code. Um, okay, there's... There are clues, there, are langu there is language that will eventually crack this case. Enigma code. I'm going to pull some cards at this point. It takes us into the realm of spies and government. The Hermit has just come out. So remember this is from Madeline's perspective. Let's have some cards, Madeline. What happened? Please help us to see. Archangel Metatron, please help me be a clear channel here for this child. What happened? The Three of Swords ending. A definite ending. I don't think she's still alive. I hope I'm proven wrong one day on that. I don't think she is. S something was hidden. The magician. Somebody was practiced in the arts. Um, I've got a Masonic link. I'm pretty sure Jerry was a Mason. But this isn't just your average Mason. This is sort of um, ritual magic um, and magic can be used for good and for bad um, power can be abused the magician's power can be abused the magician has many tools at the end of the day at his disposal um, the emperor and the devil came out together leave it there for the moment um, the Emperor and the devil came out together the Emperor is the card of the father or a father figure and we've got the devil card um, th these cards I'm not surprised to see because I, 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 don't, I, I had already had a couple of practices with this subject just to try and get myself you know into the flow of it all and the card of the devil, the card of the hermit, the card of the emperor, that they can't come up all the time. Um, but let's just see, we've got 
five cards here. This is from Madeline's perspective, the Hermit. I'm interpreting this as um, usually the Hermit is when we, we want to hide away. You know, we need time on our own. We need introspection. We need time for reflection. But I'm feeling this is more um, hide, literally hiding, somebody hiding something, probably somebody hiding her. Um, can you see the way this person is going out in the night uh, with a little lantern and a staff? Under the under the moonlight, um, looking a bit sheepish. To be perfectly honest with you, we've then got why did they do this? It's linked into the three of swords: heartache, loss, ending. Um, the magician. I'm hearing here as well. This might be. Um, this might be utilizing power but then it's almost like creating a spell but then the spell goes wrong you know you don't intend to create what you did I mean I know I know you know I'm just bringing in my own knowledge now I know there are theories that she was sedated for example and that it might have been an accidental overdose on the parents part um, I don't personally, I haven't felt anywhere along that this was uh, premeditated um, and, you know, torturous or, you know, not murder in that way. I think it's, it feels more like a manslaughter type situation. It feels as though here was somebody who did something created I want to say almost like a potion or lotion and it's easy to interpret that in terms of maybe giving a sedative or something and for whatever reason the, the potion they got it wrong it was too strong or it reacted differently on that particular day something linked into that um, this card has a dual meaning though because I'm also linking it into um, secret societies I mean there is no doubt that this case, the amount of money that it has brought in, um, the attention that it got versus other children that go missing that get not even a fraction of the attention, the fact that the media were there literally within hours and never departed. There are so many weird things about this case. You know, why this child? Why this level of attention? you know, why were governments stepping in to help? I um, can't remember who was in power at the time. Was it, was it Cameron? No, can't remember. Was it Blair? Can't remember who it was. But, you know, whoever the Prime Minister of the day was, it was Gordon Brown, I think, actually. I think I'm right in saying that. There was just this enormous help right from the offset. And that always felt to me, and I'm feeling it's linked in what we've got here with these cards, that it was like, a pulling of favours, you know, it was the fact that probably the father was linked into, um, I'm pretty sure he is a mason, but you know, as I say, it's not, it's, this is like high up, this is high up, it's not just your average mason who meets in the village hall, you know, and is uh, and is helping with local business. Um, for whatever reason, this is high up in the organisation, strings were pulled, favours were um, granted, and, um, you know, the magician here is almost like the secret club. Um, something is just not sitting right at all with that. And then we've got the emperor and the devil. Um, do I need to really interpret those? I'm not really sure I want to interpret them. I'd maybe just quite like the cards to speak for themselves. Um... If it's not linked into the father, it's certainly some male figure that was involved. Um, I'm looking at the depiction of the devil on the card. Um, there's a pile of money here. There is a flame. 
there is an apple and a snake, very sort of Garden of Eden-esque. There's a young girl reaching up for the apple, which the snake is trying to take away from her. Money seems to figure somewhere here in all of this. Um, and also I'm struck by the emperor is somebody who um, relishes and who... Uh, I wanted to get the words right. Who relishes and who likes the trappings of being the emperor. You know, this guy's got an orb that he's holding there. I can't remember what the official name of that thing is with the cross on top of it. Okay, it's a bit like royalty. It's like what the queen holds when she's um, when, in a coronation. Um, and he's got his golden laurel, you know, on his head in this car, the emperor. Um, it just feels like it's about prestige and trappings of success and money. Um, and that feels very important. Um, and for whatever reason, that those trappings and the importance and the prestige seems to tie him into this more lower energy. So whoever the emperor is in this reading um, is not coming out as operating from their higher self. They're coming out as operating from their shadow side. Um, OK, let's have one final card. And then we're going to look at it from another perspective. Madeline. Justice. Okay. Um, yeah, justice. Again, that, that card's coming up every time I do the... Every time I've tried to do this, that card comes up as well. Justice. Justice will be served. Justice will be served. The cards are quite clear. So I'm going to put them back into the pack. Um, and shuffle them well so you can see that I'm doing that and we're going to move on and we're going to look at this from another perspective so Madeline um, anything else before we move on that I loved my parents yeah that I loved my family Um, she's talking about loving her family, but she's talking about her family, both sides of the veil. She's definitely not a child that's on her own. Um, she's very much not on her own. She's surrounded by people, actually. In a weird way, one of the things about the case is that she was left. Her, brothers and, her brother and her sister and her were left alone. And it's like, wherever she is now, she's surrounded by people. She's very rarely alone. Um... I think part of her healing on the other side of the veil has been is they're trying to help her to be more at peace with being alone um, that left quite a big scar so she's always got other people around her which is why she's always got her horse with her as well um, Madeline anything else to say Wondering if she was fatty with food. I mean, you know, a lot of children are, particularly at that age. Because um, she's saying, I like my food now. Um, I'm being shown, I'm being shown like roast dinners, things like that. Um, make of that what you will. Um, she's making me smile because her energy is really lovely. Um, it's certainly not the energy of some sort of tortured soul. Um, it's the energy of somebody who's quite at peace, actually. Um, what message do you have for your mum and dad? What message do you have for your mum and dad? She's showing me water again. She's showing me rain, washing away rain. Water seems to be very... prevalent as an energy around her. Um, what 
what's the message for your mum and dad? I'm not feeling she wants to speak on that yet. Maybe she will later. She's not yet. Okay, let's go to the parents. It's like a silence actually from her with regard to them at the moment. Um, let's look at these two then. Okay, so this is Jerry and Kate. And I'm going to read it first from um, Kate's perspective. Okay, the mother. And let's go to the cards again and give them a good shuffle. So Kate McCann. Kate McCann. She's quite hard to read is the first thing I can tell you straight away. Um, I'm feeling a, a deadening of sensation um, around my mind space, around my head space. There's this sense where she's just checked out. That's what it feels like. It feels like she's checked out. Um, she's here, but she's not really here. Um, I mean, whatever the circumstances of this disappearance, um, I still feel worst case scenario, if the parents were involved, it was an accident. Um, and if that is the case, she's got to live with the guilt of that. And I feel torment with her, but actually it's the torment feels old because actually I think what she's done is she's deadened it. She's deadened it with exercise I'm hearing, but I also feel there's a medication. Um, don't judge her for that, wouldn't blame her for that at all. Um, you know, it's an antidepressant, something like that. There's something where it's just like the, the, the emotions around her are deadened. The first card that comes out for her is the Five of Wands. Now, this is Punch and Judy, okay? And I don't know how whether Punch and Judy is a, a universal thing that people understand or whether it's just a very quintess, quintess or whatever, if it's a very UK thing. Um, Punch and Judy shows, you see these at the end of Seaside Piers in the UK, and they're two puppets and it's very, it's almost like black humour. Um, the puppets always like bash the living daylights out of each other. Um, there's, it's it's a weird one. I know it's a wit bit weird, but here the message I'm getting with this, why it's come up with her is she's, she's actually sick of the whole circus. Um, Cause I am hearing the word circus. She's sick of the whole circus. She's sick of the, um, the gawping. You know, she's sick of people gawping at her, um, her family dynamic that's been played out on the world stage. Um, there's a sense where she just wants it over with. She's going through the motions. Um, is there a sadness? Yes, there's a sadness there. Um, but more than anything, I'm feeling a blankness. I'm feeling a blankness. Um, Ten of Cups has just come out. This is the happy family, okay? This is what she tries to create still with her existing children. Um, but it's also a, a harking back to what she had because on the bottom of the pack, we've got the Four of Cups. Um, and the Four of Cups is sort of, you know, this person is reminiscing over what they lost. So they lost the happy family, you know? Um, and she feels it's irretrievably gone. Um, Kate McCann, from her perspective, the disappearance of her daughter, what can we know? Metatron, what can we know? Kate McCann, Kate McCann, Kate McCann. Um, he's showing me her profile which is quite dignified, she's quite elegant, she's quite poised. Um, I'm wanting to say she's quite practised. I'm hearing that word, quite practised. Um, quite professional. Um, I think she used to be a former GP or an anaesthetist or something like that. 
so she's used to being able to put on a face. Um, I mean, we have seen her break down and be emotional, but no one really sees this woman's torment. Um, she's tormented. Okay, the cards have just gone all over the floor. It's like a whole stack of cards is gonna come tumbling down. That's the message there. Just pick them up. That's literally what all this is. The whole thing is just gonna come crashing down. Um, the reality that maybe they've been living under. Maybe there are lies they've been living under. I don't know. Um, it all comes crashing down eventually. Okay, Metatron, let's try and get a bit more specific, please. Kate McCann. What happened with Maddie? Okay, that one. The Six of Pentacles. Card of Money. Um, let's shuffle again. I'm finding her quite difficult to read. It's like she's not giving up much away. Her defences are sky high. She doesn't actually know any other way. She's probably forgotten that she put the defences there. Money plays a part here. She's also got the Ten of Swords. And this is how she feels on a bad day. You know, it's over. It's the end. Whatever happened with this child, her disappearance for her as a mother was unbearable, is unbearable. She also feels stabbed in the back. You know, nine of those swords are actually in front of the person, but there's one that's pierced through the back straight through the heart at the back. Stabbed in the back by somebody or something. But we've got these cards of money. I said to you money feels important. The accumulation of money, the building of money, security, you know, keeping up appearances, keeping the home together. Not saying there's even anything wrong with it, but it comes through and it's slightly weird that that would come through of, en of all the other energies when we're trying to actually talk about her daughter. What happened with Maddie? Kate, from your perspective, what happened with Maddie? You won't find any answers looking into her eyes is what I'm hearing. It's like she's wearing a mask. Okay, so one just flown out. Oh. The Seven of Swords just flew out. This is lying, treachery, deceit, somebody running away, middle of the night. Again, a lot of references here to like middle of the night type energy. The moon seems to feature in a lot of these cards. Um, this is the card that of deceit, of somebody deceived her. Um, or she's had to go along with lies of some description. Um, it's the card of secrets. It's the card of um, treachery. One more card, Kate. Okay. What happened to Madeline? Who was responsible? Who or what was responsible? for Madeleine's disappearance. Kate, who was responsible or what was responsible for Madeleine's disappearance? Kate, who was responsible or what was responsible for Madeleine's disappearance? I'm not taking those as a clump of them just fell out. Just want one card. Kate, who was responsible 
or what was responsible for Maddie's disappearance. There's something about her name, Madeline and Maddie. One of them, um, one of them she liked calling her and the other one she didn't like. Or maybe it was like when she was a naughty girl, it was Madeline and other times it was Maddie. I don't know, there's something coming through about her name. Well, who or what was responsible? We've got the Four of Swords, which is upside down. Okay, the Four of Swords upside down. Um, okay, which is the card of, pretty sure I'm right in saying this. I'm just gonna look it up in the book. Isn't it usually the card that links into the need for sleep? Um, Four of Swords, let me just double check this. Because if it is, I've got something to say on that. Um, yeah, it's the, it's the card which usually talks about the need for rest after maybe a stressful experience or something like this. Um, uh, and when it's reversed, it says, there could be enforced isolation. Well, there was enforced isolation. They were left alone. Nobody, um, nobody doubts that. They may feel abandoned. Well, she was abandoned. Um, mm, I, my gut feel, I asked the question, who or what was responsible? And we've got the card which talks about the need for sleep. I honestly think, my gut feel is I think this was an accidental overdose. That's what I'm sensing. Um, I might very well be wrong, um, but that's what is coming through here. Um, let's just pull a couple of other cards from a different deck for Kate, okay? And then we're gonna look at the dad. So Kate McCann, who or what was responsible? Who or what was responsible for Maddie's death? Who or what was responsible for Maddie's death? The Knight of Wands, upside down. Um, so it's male, somebody who's quite headstrong, passionate, but equally this could have been an aspect of Madeline herself. I pick up that she was quite feisty and lively and maybe it was almost that side, that aspect of her that made them want to give her something to help her sleep, not understanding the implications of what that would be. Um, flying out all over the place. We've got the Seven of Swords have come out again and the Six of Coins has come out again. And then we've got the Knight of Swords. Right, we've got two cards that are the same. So that card of deceit and treachery, Seven of Swords, it's two different depictions. It's the same card. Um, so there are lies, there are lies here. She knows this, she's, she's, either, she's lying or there are lies. Um, why would she do that though? To me as a mother, it makes no sense. Maybe the answer lies in the money. Two cards, which are the six of coins. What's the six of coins about? Let me just have a look in Donna's book. Um, Six of Pentacles. Uh, doesn't really tell me anything other than what I've already said. Um, no, 
Okay, I'm going to move on. I'm not going to force it if the message isn't coming through straight away. I'm going to look at it now from Jerry's perspective, the father's perspective. So let's put the cards back in the deck and give them a good shuffle. So Jerry McCann. Um, is he a surgeon? He worked at a hospital, didn't he? He wasn't a GP. I think he was more linked into hospital work. In my head, I'm hearing surgeon. But I don't know whether that's correct or not. Um, very intelligent man is the first thing I'm picking up. Very intelligent man. Very sharp. Um, wouldn't want, when I say wouldn't want to cross him, what I mean by that is um, doesn't suffer fools gladly. Okay, doesn't suffer fool, fools gladly. Probably got a bit of a short fuse, temper wise. Um, doesn't make him a bad guy, by the way. Lots of, lots of people have got short fuses. Um, I'm just reading his energy. Um, sharp, analytical, uh, mind focused rather than heart focused. Kate's more heart focused. He's more mind focused. Um, friends in high places. I'm hearing that again. Ah, Jerry's energy. Let's just start generally with him. Let's have a look at his energy. What's going on with Jerry McCann, his energy? I'm hearing the words misunderstood. I don't know how close they are anymore. I mean, it would put a strain on any, any relationship, wouldn't it? Something like this happening. Um, I'm feeling a distance, but I don't think they're a very emotionally connected couple anyway. Right, that one, what is that? The King of Wands, yeah, that's him. He's the King of Wands. So this is the guy who is, um, he's very strong, very strong, very passionate. Um, very direct, um, pretty full on basically, um, very creative, um, very sure of himself I'm hearing, cocky I'm also hearing, or was. Pretty sure he's quite mater materially minded. Again, doesn't make him a bad person. Uh, what else? I'm going to keep shuffling the cards till they're really obviously coming out. I'll make sure I'm getting the right ones. Joe McCann. Okay, there's one that's just come out, the High Priestess. This is the card of spirituality. Um... Let's pull a card that goes with that card of the High Priestess. What goes with the card of the High Priestess? I almost wanted to say the High Priest. There isn't a High Priest card, but it's like it almost would be. The Hermit. That's come out again then. The Hermit. I'm wanting to put these two together and say Secret Society. That's what I've said before. The Hermit. Um, it's not, it's whatever esoteric information or knowledge or beliefs that he has. This isn't stuff that you can just Google or go into WH Smith and buy a book on, okay? This is secret society knowledge, okay? Um, it's hidden. It's hidden information um, for the chosen few, you know? Uh, only because it's set up that way, not because that's the way that God ordained it to be. Mystery school, it's like a mystery school type energy, as opposed to a sort of 5D, you know, new consciousness, new earth thing. Um, the Ace of Pentacles upside down. I think he would have been worried about losing money and status. Okay, Jerry, we can. What happened to Maddie? 
what happened to Maddie. What happened to Maddie? Jerry McCann. Jerry McCann. Well, she started a new cycle, is what happened to Maddie. Okay, she had completed her contract here on Earth. Um, because you only get the card of the Fool, which is the complete new beginning, when you've basically worked through all aspects of anything, whether it's a life, whether it's, you know, a particular chapter, um, whether it's a relationship, whatever it is. But she was only, what was she, three or four? So her very short life had completed and she was on to the next cycle. Um, but we're not being shown her death. We're being shown what happened afterwards. Um, Jerry, what happened? Four of Swords again. Look, you see the card? Four of Swords. Again, it's the card of rest and sleep. This is linked into them. Those children were, I think, sedated. Um, bottom of the deck, we've got the Eight of Swords. Incapacitated, unable to move. Um, stuck. It's weird because what I want to say is it's almost as though if that is the truth and if that's what happened, that they would give they gave their children something to help them sleep so they could go off and have a nice time and have a meal out. It isn't by any stretch of the imagination right. I'm not condoning it. But it equally it equally isn't the most appalling act of murder that can be committed. I don't think they I don't think either of them set out to harm her. I think they were slack and negligent, is the word I'm hearing, negligent, both in leaving them, but equally in giving them whatever they gave them. They, sh they should have known, above anybody else, they should have known what they were giving them. Um, the bit that is really indefensible, and we'll ask why they did it, is why the cover-up? The only possible and excellent explanation so far I've got is it links to money and status and wealth. Not wanting to lose that, I guess. But I, I'm finding it hard to comprehend that that would be the reason. Um, but then again, I'm not particularly materially minded. Um, rebirth. That's the card of death and rebirth. If there was a cover-up, what was behind it? Why do it? If there was a cover-up, why do it? Okay, strength. That's a weird card to get, the card of strength. But can you see that sign there? It's the Illuminati sign. I honestly think this is linked into some sort of secret society. If it's not the Masons, it's something else. By the way, I'm not dissing the Masons. Not everybody who's a Mason is a bad person. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying it's like any, society, any part of society, there are different levels of it. You don't know necessarily what goes on at different levels within any organisation. Think about a corporate business. Those people that work on the shop floor and go into Marks and Spencer. No, no let's not bring Marks and Spencers into it. But any, any organisation, you know, they go in, they do their job. This company seems all right. You know, go up to the next level management. Yeah, things are OK. Go right to the top of the boardroom. And that's actually sometimes where, for example, corruption can come in. You know, um, uh, money laundering, all that type of stuff. 
Um, the same with government, the same with um, church I'm hearing as well. Go into your li local little parish church, you've got a friendly vicar, the, par the parishioners are nice, no problem. Go into the very, very high level of some churches, not all churches, and I'm not linking it to a particular faith, you have corruption, you have abuse going on, okay? You can't see it lower down the chain. So I think all of this, why the hell they, it was covered up, um, I think it links into some sort of weird code that I don't understand because I'm not part of that society. Um, you know, somehow we'll, we'll, we'll make it all right for you, we'll, we'll cover it up for you, we'll... I'm even hearing the word initiation. There's something linked into secret society. I'm going to ask the question, which I know I need to ask, which I don't particularly want to ask. I'm going to go to a different deck. I'm going to ask whether there was any for any link to paedophilia. That doesn't mean it's linked to the father at all. Um, by the way, this might be linked into the secret society. I'm just going to ask about paedophilia. Is there a paedoph paedophilia link with this case? Is there a paedophile link with this case? Is there a paedophile link with this case? The Two of Cups, which is the card of love. Is there a link with paedophilia with this case? I'm getting a headache, I'm gonna have some water. It's a hot day. Bring in Archangel Zadkiel. Is there a link with paedophilia with this case? relevant. Oh God, I'm cold. Well, I actually feel it's related to what we're doing here. Um, it's almost like I'm hot because we're throwing the spotlight on something that no one really wants to look at. Give me one card, the King of Wands. <sighs> I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm really, really wrong. But we've got the King of Wands that's come out twice. King of Wands was the first card that came out for Jerry, and I just asked the question, linking into abuse, and we've got the King of Wands again. I don't sort of want to even entertain that. Um, and the fool but the fool twice um Go 
back to Zadkiel. Purple, violet flame, everything. The energy's just got really heavy. Archangel Uriel. I'm gonna go and get it. Hold on. Right. Zadkiel's cleared the energy. Uriel's like the warrior angel that goes in to places. He's fearless, like Metatron. But for some reason, I'm bringing Uriel in. Oh, okay. I'm bringing Uriel in because Uriel's linked into justice. He's linked to the, into the legal system. Okay, thank you. Somebody feels they're above the law. That's what I'm hearing. Somebody feels they're above the law. And so therefore they will be answerable to universal law. Okay. They will be answerable to universal law. There is no escaping this universal law. There is no way out from that. I think what I'll do now is I'm going to pull a couple of cards on whatever this secret society is. I think that might be helpful. Let's put the cards back in the deck because this is all linked into other people. It's not just about, it's not just about a family. My gut feel from what's coming out so far, I think there was an accident. Um, I think it was covered up. And I think it was covered up by people in high places for whatever reason. And I think there are things going on within that club, that higher up society that link into other very unsavory things, which may be the father was linked to, or he might be completely and utterly innocent. And I hope to God he is. I always like to see the best in people. But there is something a bit sinister about this society, whatever the society is that they're linked to. Whoever it was that pulled the favours, whoever it was that somehow managed to get Gordon Brown on the phone, whoever it was that, you know, reporters were there within hours and stayed there, you know, you just think about the number of children that go missing every single day um, around the world and, the, case, and, and the, the, the coverage that this case got, okay? Got the devil on the bottom of the pack again. Um, yeah, let's pull, pull the devil out. Seek this secret society. What can you tell us, Uriel? What are you ready to hear, he's saying. Okay. The Knight of Wands. And before I pull any other card, I'm drawn to the fact that there's a union, uh, sorry, not union, Jack, it's the flag of England there, St. George, British. What's that symbol above the, the head? That's linked into, you'll tell me probably, you, you, or if I enable the comments, you'll tell me. Um, I, I know that that, I know that that is linked into a secret order. And we've also got the emblem of the kingdom, you know, the kingdom and St. George, all that, you know. 
so that says to me that whatever this society is is old it goes back to uh, the middle ages at least probably earlier than that even it's an order I want to call it an order it's an order it's not a society it's an order um, what can you tell us about the order then tell us about this order the nine of cups it promises entices you in with promises of riches and you know cup runneth over abundance in the true sense of the word um, and it tempts you I'm, I'm looking at the roses it's tempting it's a tempting offer. Who would refuse? Who would say, no, thank you, I don't wish to join? Um, it's a privilege to join. It's a privilege to sit on that swing, okay? Um, why would you say no? But I was about to say, it basically demands a high price. I've got the fool again, the new beginning. Three of swords, an ending. Two of swords, an ending. Crossroads, endings. It's a high price of entry to this club. I sort of feel you don't know what you're getting into until you, you're in it. What's behind it? What's behind this society? What's behind this society? We've got the Seven of Swords again and the Five of Cups. Um, people that are drawn to it are damaged in some way. This is a card of loss and regret. Um, I'm just feeling as though it's like an olive branch that's given. I think they prey on people that are vulnerable maybe. Maybe they see people who have got flaws it's a bit like the Scientology, it's not Scientology, but it's a bit like the sci what I understand of Scientology, which is that they, they hook you in and then they sort of learn all your secrets, you know, so you can't escape. Um, blackmail, you know, blackmail you to stay in. Um, again, we've got the Seven of Swords. So, yeah, treachery lies. This society is behind it. Will this society come to justice at some point? Hmm, that's a funny thing to hear. I'm hearing the worm, the worm is turning. Do you understand that expression? Is it a universal expression? I'm not sure. The worm is turning. Um, I don't know whether that means Jerry or whether it means somebody else within the organisation, somebody who is realising that the cost is too high. They're seeing the light. I mean, I guess, to be perfectly honest with you, all of these organisations, if they're built on a lower vibrational energy, then they are ultimately going to be affected by the ascension of this planet. And how is that going to happen? It's going to happen via um, people within the organisations making the changes. So I'm just hearing the worm is turning. Um, it certainly doesn't feel like it's a fast um, downfall of the tower, but it feels as though the there might be a few dodgy bricks in the tower, you know, um, that one day is going to create a bigger crack for the whole thing to come tumbling down. Well, let's get back to Maddie. Hi guys, you still with me? My camera battery just died, so... Um, 
I'm going to finish by looking at this from the Portuguese police's perspective and then some final points from Metatron. Um, okay, so let's pull some cards from the Ch Chinese, from the Portuguese police's perspective. Although actually I'm hearing the word Chinese whispers. <clears throat> Chinese whispers is one of these things where, you know, somebody says something as fact and then it gets passed on to the next person who sort of slightly changes it. And then by the time it gets to the 20th person, nobody knows the truth. Chinese whispers indeed. And at the bottom of all this is a beautiful little girl who's pulled on all of our heartstrings, hasn't she? I understand now why she didn't want to say anything about her parents. She doesn't want to implicate and she doesn't, um, she doesn't want to get anybody into trouble um, because of this, whoever these other people are. And I feel as though who these other people are, are faceless. By that I mean a faceless organisation. I don't even know if it is the Masons, to be honest. I'm just using that as an example. It's a secret society which is faceless, but it has people within it whose faces you know very well. And there is corruption within it. And it will come up to the light. It will come up to the light. And as I said that, the King of Swords came through, which is confirmation that the truth will come out at some point. Um, okay. Let's just go back to Maddie for one moment. I'm going to bring in Mother Mary, actually. I've not done that yet, have I? Mother Mary. She's saying that she was with her in the apartment. When she felt abandoned and alone, she was with her. And she's with all children who feel abandoned and alone. She's with anybody who feels parentless, including the parents. That's a funny thing to say, but I'm being drawn to the fact that she's with Kate as well, the mother. It's like the mother is with the mother and the mother is with the child. She doesn't get involved in, it's like, it's, it's interesting because she's not an energy like Metatron um, or Uriel who will just wade in there, you know, and give you a perspective. She's like, no, I, I don't want, I don't wish to speak on this. I am just here for whoever needs me. Her energy is much more, I'm just here to serve. Um... My strength is in my steadiness, peace, tranquility, nothing can rock me. The masculine energies of Metatron and Uriel are more sort of warrior-like. Yeah, let's go in. We are going to look at this. We are going to talk about this. Mary's more, no, I'm just going to hold, I'm going to hold the space. And we thank her for that. She's around Kate McCann. I think Kate McCann is Catholic, isn't she? So maybe she's got a connection with Mother Mary. She turns to Mother Mary. And that's the whole thing. Mother Mary is there for anybody. Absolutely anybody. Um, Portuguese police we're now going to look at. The Portuguese police have been very um, maligned, actually, you know, um, certainly from a UK perspective, you know, the, the narrative that we've been fed has very much been about how hopeless they are, how they missed all the clues, they bungled it. There was the guy who wrote the book, you know, what a charlatan he is from having published it. Those aren't my words, that's just the perception of what's out there. 
I don't actually feel that's the truth. So I would like the truth to, for the Portuguese police, their energy with this case. Uh, anything that wants to come through, let's just see from the Portuguese police's perspective um, what the truth is. Um, three cards that fell out there. We've got the hanged man, which is that they are seeing things from a different perspective, which is what they have done from day one. You know, from day one, they saw it from a different perspective. Um, link, linking it to money. And we've got the Queen of Wands. I'm not sure who the Queen of Wands is, to be perfectly honest with you. I'll have to ask that in a moment. But there's various ways that you can read the money card. Either it's confirming that this case somehow is linked into money, or why it's covered up is linked into money. Prestige, everything that I've already said. But the hanged man is, to me, it's just very clear. It's like they, would take, they took a different perspective on it. Um, maybe they could see something that nobody else could see. What's the Queen of Wands there for? Why is she there? Why is the Queen of Wands there? What part does she play? Queen of Wands. What's the Queen of Wands about? Portuguese police. Portuguese police. Not sure. Let me go to another deck. Feels important that Queen of Wands. No, stay with the same deck you're saying, okay. Um, I'm sensing that there is a, I don't know much about Portuguese culture to be perfectly honest with you, but I, I get a sense. I mean, I, I remember as a child going to places like Spain um, and the Spanish, uh, as an example, I, I, I know that they love children, you know, you go with, you know, they'll pat you on the head. And I remember going with my own girls. It's like they're giving them little sweets and going to cafes. It's like, oh, how, you know, how is, you know, how are you today? All of this. They talk to the children. There's a love for children. Um, I feel as though this, I, I'm, I'm feeling that this is somehow linked into, um, genuine love um and feeling and regard for madeline actually and i almost want to say that feels to me like what madeline might have looked like if she'd grown up it almost feels like she's on the beach again dancing um what else queen of wands okay metatron metatron is saying to me from the portuguese police's perspective you know i said at the start that madeline feels as though she's never actually had a voice well, here within the Portuguese case, Madeline was always centre stage. It was never about. Um, obviously, they would. You know, they had to interview the parents and all the rest of it. But Madeline was centre stage. I feel this is like a grown-up Madeline. You know, the Queen of Wands. It was almost like the energy that, as a child, Madeline had. She was certainly old for her years, even though she was three or four. She was a very old soul. She would have grown into that. You know, that's what she had within her. Um, that's what I'm just picking up. What else? Portuguese police. Case of Madeleine McCann. Too many cards to take there. Too many cards. Just give me one or two. Metatron. Portuguese police. The Five of Swords. Dancing on eggshells. That's my interpretation of this card. I don't read tarot cards um, like most people. I read them intuitively. I just let Metatron speak through me. So on this image, I'm seeing a person. They're walking on stilts. It's like I'm feeling like walking on eggshells. And can you see, to me, this represents the police force. And here we've got a man and a woman, okay? And it's like um, towering over these two, which I guess are Jerry and Kate, walking on eggshells trying to see the higher perspective. Can you see here how this being, this figure that represents the police is what I'm feeling, is looking down at a higher perspective over these two individuals, trying to make sense of it, okay? Um, and not finding it particularly easy either. What else? The Ten of Swords, um, they felt exhausted by this case as well, completely and utterly exhausted. 
um, they also felt stabbed in the back. Um, that other card, do you remember I said, I can't remember who got it, but somebody had loads of swords around the body, but only one through them. For the Portuguese police, they've got all the swords going right the way through their body. They were um, mocked around the world. Um, they were said to be, you know, inept and it hurt. It hurt national pride. It hurt, um, it hurt them. It hurt the force. The next card we've got is the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords. I think this is um, probably Kate. Um, oh, okay, that's really interesting what I'm being told here. The Queen of Swords is um, Kate because Kate is quite aloof. Um, she's quite, she comes across as quite emotionally cool. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just the way she is. It's the way she is. It's almost like the opposite of what I imagine a very strong, you know, sort of Portuguese or Spanish or Latino um, or Italian woman to be, you know, who are, who are much more fiery and emotional and who will, you know, tell you how they feel and like, here's my heart. And um, it's like they, they couldn't understand Kate at all. It was like, who is this? Who is this woman who's so capable of holding all her emotions in and being so cool and so calm and collected when this has happened? The daughter's gone missing. Why is she not being more like this woman who's sort of, you know, Queen of Wands is, is literally it's like, you know, you just see everything. You see all of it. Um, there's no holding back. Yeah, it can be, you know, you can be a complete volcano of fury and anger um, and passion and emotion. And there was none of that with her. So it's like they didn't understand. They didn't understand Kate in particular. They did not understand Kate. What else? Two more cards. Portuguese police. I'm going to ask the question, were they thwarted? By that I mean, was it, did somehow somebody thwart their investigation, interfere with it, tell them to close it down, whatever, okay? So were they thwarted? The tower. Yeah, they were. Um, they were. The tower came in and the case that they were building I've got the King of Wands again. I feel that's Jerry. Um, collapsed. Keep getting that card of the Fool. I'm going to ask what that's about. Um, was it thwarted? Yes, it was. But then we've got the card of Judgment. I think Judgment eventually... I, want to, I am saying eventually. Judgment eventually comes. But it... There's two ways to read this. But I think I'm wanting to say... It's as though they were building a case, they were building, they were building this case and the tower came and they just had to almost just, you know, I think it was taken away from them, wasn't it? I think Scotland Yard took back control of it. The UK police took back control of it. Um, don't even know how they managed to do that. Um, but or well, the other way is to say that the tower, excuse me, there will be this tower moment <clears throat> and whatever the Portuguese police believe to happen, whatever they feel they can prove, eventually comes to fruition. Why does this fool card keep coming through the whole time? What's that about? Just ask what that's about. I don't understand the role of the fool card, why it keeps coming out all the time. Why I keep getting a fool card? The Six of Cups, which is looking back at the past. Why are we getting the full card? Oh. Hmm. It's the first time I got the Death card come out, but it came out in reverse. I'll show you what I've got. Okay, why do we keep getting the, the, the Fool card? We've got the Fool, we've got the Six of Cups. This links into the past, okay? So this could be the family's past history, okay? Um, the Nine of Cups, things were okay, they were quite happy, but then death happened, okay? Or something happened that was very traumatic, upside down. 
it was like a death that happened but yet we don't know it's a death yet because it's unsolved we don't we don't know there's a body we don't even know if she is dead feels as though she's passed over to be perfectly honest but we don't really we haven't got facts we haven't got facts which is why the death card is in reverse but somebody very quickly wanted to move on to the new their new journey um I mean, you could say, but yet they haven't ever moved on. They're still living in the past. But at the end of the day, she disappeared from that town and they did have to get on a plane and leave whatever happened there. And they did have to get on with their lives and make a new start. Let's go to the other deck. What have I done with it? There it is. Why are we getting the full card? One card, why are we getting the full card? The Six of Swords, yeah, they just wanted to move away from it, you know, literally, as I've just said, get on an aeroplane um, and move on. Can't get much more on that. So let's end this, because I know it's been lengthy. My battery is about to die again. Final message from Maddie. Thank you for caring. Thank you for checking in on me. Know that I am well. Know that I am at peace. Know that there is much that is unseen that has come from this which has been beneficial. Putting the spotlight on other cases, other children. This was a sole contract on my part. And then I'm just seeing her on the bridge again. And it's like she's leaving with more questions than she's answered. Metatron's just saying, give her time. She's still healing. She's not ready for the full inquisition yet. And she's just being welcomed back by these others. She's okay, guys. She's okay. Well, what to make of that? I don't know. As I say, my heartfelt wish is that maybe in a few years' time she might just turn up alive and well and whatever's come through here isn't the truth. But you've seen the way I've worked and how I've done it and you've seen the cards that come through. And I guess time will tell, won't it? Um, I am going to be in Praia de Luz at Lionsgate and I am going to be sending some healing out for everybody involved in this. And I'm going to be walking Metatron's light through that town and sprinkling it over Portugal as I fly, which is just what you do as a light worker. It's nothing special but I'm going to be taking the light right there on Lionsgate. And my wish is that the truth is revealed and that peace comes to all parties concerned. And that if there are any wrongdoing by any secret society, whatever that is, that that comes to light in the way that it's meant to. And I think now what we do is we pass it back into Metatron's hands. Thanks for watching everyone. I think what I might do this evening is make a donation to a children's charity. It won't be the Madeleine McCann Fund. It'll be another children's charity. And I think that is what, if you're feeling powerless, I think that's what Maddie would want us to do. Much love. See you soon. Bye-bye.